Voilà. Et voilà, on est, on est... On est, on est sur notre table, tout va bien. Exact. J'étais en train de, de, lire, euh, de lire quelques articles sur, sur Nouvelles Frontières. Ça ne nous, ça nous rajeunit pas. Mais, mais, euh, mais, euh, Avec Jacques Maillot. Exact, qui en son temps fut euh, un succès euh, exceptionnel. Ah bah phénoménal. Il, a, il y a même l'arrêt Nouvelles Frontières qui a libéralisé le, le charter en, en France en 1987. Go ahead, Mark. <rire> hello, hello, hello. Bon, 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 bonjour et hello to Michel, Michel Combe, hello, welcome, thank you for being with us, Alain, welcome back. Welcome back. I understand that Alain spent the whole day, he wanted to be the only one to be invited for all the sessions, but he has been quite <laughs> successful. <laughs> we have, we have a, a, a session with Michel, but we have a day with Alain. And I... <laughs> <laughs> you're so lucky, you're so lucky to have a day with Alain. Wow. <laughs> so thank you both for joining us on this uh, fireside chat with Michel Combe. Michel, um, you're the president of SoftBank Group International, and um, we do have a, 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 a chat opened. It, it is located on your right hand side of the screen where you can ask questions to uh, Michel anytime you want during this uh, live session. And um, Alain will probably kick off with a couple of questions uh, just to get us started and warmed up. So Alain, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. Uh, Michel, first, you know, it's, a, it's an honor to have you, uh, you know, here with us and, and, and participate. And it's an honor to, to ask you, uh, you know, a few questions about, about you know, who you are and, and, and you know, um, you're now in Miami, so so it, it makes a, it makes a lot of sense to also ask you know questions about Miami and what you know made you made you move here. Um, but you know, and of course, speak about SoftBank, SoftBank International, and speak about the Miami Initiative um, and any of the you know of the uh, the great initiatives that uh, that SoftBank has taken, both you know globally, but but also uh, but also in Miami. So um, first and foremost, you know, I mean, I I could I could do your bio, but 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 it wouldn't you know. Do it as much justice as if you, um, you know, gave us a little bit about you know where you came from and and, and how you got to where you are. Um, we could spend an hour and a half on this, but uh, but but just uh, you know just 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 tell us you know um, how you became the president of SoftBank International. So thank you, Anna. Good uh, afternoon to all of you. A pleasure to join uh, this uh, this conference. Uh, well, I will be brief, you see, with my gray hairs that uh, I have already many years behind me. Uh, I am what people would call a telecommunication veteran, meaning that I have been mainly involved in the telecommunication industry as a CEO of uh, different service operators from uh, Vodafone Europe. I was deputy CEO of Orange. I've been the CEO of uh, Sprint. I have been the CEO of uh, Altis. So that's uh, one piece, and I have been also in the equipment manufacturing piece, having been the CEO of uh, Alcatel Lucent. So, uh, heavily loaded in telecommunications. A little bit of fantasy with uh, tourism. The CEO of a company in France called uh, Nouvelle Frontière, which was a tour operator, which I sold uh, to uh, TUI a few, let's say, two decades ago, or uh, more or less. And then more recently, I joined the SoftBank uh, Group. Of course, SoftBank was already my shareholder as the CEO of uh, Sprint. And uh, I've been lucky enough to know Masasan since uh, 2007, when we sold him Vodafone Japan. And since then, I have been quite close to uh, Masa on one side, and obviously Marcelo Clary, my partner in crime, whom with we have uh, worked together, I guess, in the past uh, 15 years in a uh, different type of uh, situations. So uh, that's a long story short, and uh, so very, uh, very exciting now to be part of SoftBank. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's impressive, and we could speak about every single of those, those experiences, but, uh, but you're now in Miami. I mean, you're in New York now, but you live in Miami. Um, and so, so what brought you to Miami? Why Miami? Um, and, uh, and, and are you happy? Are you excited? You've lived pretty much everywhere, including in Kansas City. Uh, so, 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 um, so what about Miami? You mean Kansas City is the Paris of the Plains? 
that the way they attracted me to Kansas City. And I was naive enough to go there believing that uh, that was what Marcelo promised to me. So that was a bit of a, of a surprise when I joined. No, Miami, super, super, super excited to be in Miami. Of course, that's not new for SoftBank. As, uh, as you know, Marcelo has started this company in Miami, Bright Star. Uh, SoftBank has invested in Miami in the past uh, few years. The first uh, big investment was in uh, Park Jockey, which become, became Reef with uh, Ari, which is uh, an amazing founder. And uh, we really started our journey uh, in SoftBank with uh, the SoftBank Latam Fund uh, launch, which was uh, officially established in uh, Miami in March 19. Since then, uh, we have grown our presence there through different initiatives, the Miami initiatives, the SoftBank Opportunity Fund operations, which are all in Miami. So now we have more than 60 people working out of Miami. So that's one of the reasons why it made sense for me to come to Miami. Uh, of course, I would say that on top of that, in the past two to three years, under the lead of uh, Mayor Suarez, I mean that Miami has tremendously changed that's now the capital of capital. I mean, uh, that's a tech hub. And so that's uh, make a second reason to come uh, to this, uh, uh, to, uh, to Miami with the explosion of VC investment. That's just phenomenal. And of course, there is also attractive benefits to be in, uh, in Miami, cost of living, no state income tax, which is uh, not so bad, as well as a lifestyle and uh, opportunities. I'm lucky enough to live in uh, Key Biscayne, uh, with my wife, we have a very uh, young kid, 18 months, uh, so which is amazing to be uh, uh, to be part of this uh, this uh, uh, environment. And uh, my wife is a pianist concertist. Uh, she did uh, last week the opening of uh, the Miami Symphony Orchestra. She is super excited as well. And as we say, happy wife, happy life. So all is good up to now. <laughs> um, okay, it's great. Um, it sounds uh, it sounds wonderful. Out of all the the, the places you, you know you could have been based, uh, you know it's Miami. You know now, how do you see the evolution of the city? How do you see um, you know there? It feels like something is happening. It feels like there is you know a, a critical mass of people that have come and 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 investments, investors, entrepreneurs. Um, plus, you know, the, the, uh, the regulatory sort of the, the, the state, the governor, the, the, uh, the senators and the mayor, you know, also on the side. How do you see, you know, this in the next, you know, five to 10 years? You've, you've seen the, the telecom revolution. You've seen the Internet revolution. You've seen so many different, you know, revolutions. How do you see, you know, Miami? What could it be, um, you know, in, in, in the next five to 10 years? So first, I guess that we are facing a, a, a real revolution ahead of us, and that's what we have decided to invest in at SoftBank. As you know, we are kind of, a, we portray ourselves as a vision capitalist, so meaning that we like to invest in, uh, in new trends which are going to disrupt the economy moving forward. And it's obvious that uh, AI and digital are really reshaping the full economy, the way we live, the way we work, uh, the way we entertain. And so that's uh, opening a brand new opportunities for everyone to shape the future. So that's the context in which we are and that uh, we want to embrace. And I guess that uh, Miami is really positioning itself in this new world. And uh, Mayor Suarez has, been, has done an amazing job of uh, marketing Miami as uh, an emerging uh, tech hub. And so I guess that uh, short term, uh, what he has been able to achieve and bringing uh, so many new talents, new people in Miami is just amazing. And uh, I was very surprised. I came to Miami uh, probably 10 years ago and in between 10 years ago and now that has changed quite significantly. And you, you, you sense how this, uh, this uh, city is uh, vibrating and uh, why people are now coming to Miami. Of course, I mean, the next coming few years, what is important is probably to to shift from what is still a little bit of a buzz uh, to a real long term establishment of Miami as a real tech city moving forward. And uh, I guess that uh, Miami has probably a chance to keep uh, winning in some uh, uh, segments in which uh, uh, now Miami start, start to be quite well known in healthcare, in fintech, in crypto, uh, where Miami very in early days has uh, taken the lead and there is probably also a chance 
for Miami to establish itself uh, as a for sustainable sustainable tech. So that's what I really see for the next 10 years. Of course, it will take a few things to be done, which are already tackled right now. Uh, for example, to be a better tech hub, probably Miami needs to be a better talent hub. And instead of just bringing talent from the outside, making sure that we upskill the talents that we have in Miami in order to make sure that we have the right people to lead this next uh, revolution, uh, as well as continuing to foster the collaboration in between enterprise uh, or in between private sector and education. And there I can just maybe mention the initiative that we have taken ourselves in, uh, in Miami. We partnered with uh, uh, three universities uh, to upskill uh, talents to work inside tech startups. So that's uh, what we have called the SoftBank Operator School. And uh, we just finished the session, uh, I guess, uh, uh, this week, and we had more than 5,000 uh, 5, people registered to this session. I was happy to be part of this and uh, to, uh, uh, to share my experience in terms of digital transformation. We have also another initiative, which is called Data Science for All, and which is about empowering and training underrepresented individuals uh, for jobs in data science. So that's the type of initiative that companies can take in order to help the city to be even more successful. So 10 years from now, I really, I guess that today, Miami is probably already the thir 13th uh, city in the US in terms of uh, uh, volume of VC investments. But I think that in 10 years from now, uh, Miami can really be one of the biggest cities for tech in the US and in the world. When you see uh, the you know, environment that we have, when we see the people that are around, when we see this hub in between LATAM and US, when the, you, you see all what is coming in, I am super, super optimistic and I'm really proud to be part of this movement. Great. Um, thank you. Um, you know, it's a whirlwind of, of, of initiatives. Um, initially, Miami was the, the, the capital of Latin America. It was where, um, you know, the headquarters of, of uh, US companies for Latin America or, or the beachhead of you know, Latin American companies uh, were based. Um, so you actually believe that the the that there could be a, a local transformation, you know, from you know what it was to to basically it, you know, holding its own as a as a as a tech hub. I mean, that's very uh, that's very encouraging. Um, when when we look at you know at SoftBank and obviously the Latin American fund is based in Miami, uh, which makes um, a lot of sense and invest primarily in Brazil and in. You know, in Argentina and other other Colombia countries uh, in Latin America and Mexico, um, do you see that continuing, or do you see this, you know, expanding into you know a broader sort of Miami fund? Like right now, there's the Opportunities Fund, there's the Miami Initiatives, but there's no proper Miami Investment Fund or or, or some sort of a, a regional you know fund. Obviously, it doesn't make sense if companies are global and work is remote. Uh, but is there something specific here? Um, you mentioned healthcare. You mentioned fintech. Um, is there something that, that, that specifically could be built um, here? And it could be, you know, a, an education in, initiative. It could, be, uh, it could be anything else. You know, what do you, what do you see, uh, you know, from Miami? So first I would say that Miami aligns extremely well with SoftBank broader strategy. I mean, we entered in Miami for basically two main reasons. A, it's a natural gateway in between Latin America and US. And we are investing in both regions. So for us, that's a, a natural play, place to be. Second is that there is a natural complement to SoftBank broader strategy of finding identifying pockets that are underexplored, underexploited, areas that have talents, which have opportunity, but we are, which are missing the capital. And I guess that it was a little bit the case for Miami so talents were there, uh, clearly opportunity were there when we see all those new companies which are emerging, but there was a lack of capital. And so that's something that we have done in LATAM uh, with our LATAM fund. That's what we have done with underrepresented founders in the US with the Opportunity Fund that we are very proud to have launched a year ago. So we always try to bring capital where it matters and where it can make the, the difference. So that's why Miami. So then. You say you don't have a, a completely dedicated vehicle. True, 
because you know we have brought the idea but what we have uh, what we have done what we have launched in january 2021 was a commitment to invest 100 100 million from across our funds in companies based in miami or planning to move operations or headquarters in miami so it's not a dedicated fund but it's a dedicated effort to put money in miami and usually when we when we speak when we say something we make it uh, happen and it's fair to say that today we have uh, exceeded our initial 100 million commitment to invest in miami tech companies by more than two and a half times for a total of already 250 million invested so which means that not only we have announced 100 million but we have already invested 250 which includes i guess in the, if i am not mistaken investments in 12 uh, tech companies with a presence in miami half of it half of them uh, being relocated and uh, the other half expanded operations in miami in the past 18 months so we're and we already not- happy and uh, uh, proud of that and of course we will continue i mean uh, it's clear that all that is uh, is booming is exploding and so we will uh, we will continue and uh, we are very uh, uh, very thrilled by that and as i mentioned and you were alluding to that it's not only investments that we are bringing when we bring the soft bank operator school when we bring uh, uh, our different initiatives in terms of education because we all need to contribute at the end of the day you need capital skills capabilities ambition uh, ambitious people and just to make sure that all of that is going to create the new ecosystem for the future right and 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 the 250 million that you mentioned that's not counting reef that's not counting reef neither neither bright star by the way <laughs> but, uh, not, not reef, because reef was an investment which was done before we launched this uh, initiative but reef is an amazing success from uh, from miami with uh, ari and his team uh, which are based in um, in miami and uh, of course uh, whom if i am spending a lot of time in order to help him to grow all around the world so that's uh, that's great and i don't Second. count neither uh, we work which is also in miami which uh, as you know uh, uh, sandy is the ceo of uh, of we work spend a lot of his time in miami uh, yeah. so in between new york and miami so which is great as well and so many people working for uh, we work also in miami Absolutely. Segwaying into what you just spoke about, you know, growing, um, having been the CEO of so many different operators globally in France, but also, you know, in Japan or, or in the U.S., you know, what's the common denominator? What's, you know, of, of, of the kind of success that you were, were having? I mean, you know, is it hard work? Is it, is it a lot of luck? Is it, you know, um, basically the, the, the ability to, to, to foresee the future? Is it leadership? Is it, of course, potentially a combination of both? What 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 makes you you know um, at you know at the forefront every single time? Like what's the what's the secret sauce? Well, I guess it's a bit of everything. I mean, of course, you need luck to be uh, to be successful. And when I look at, for example, what you have achieved in the past uh, two to three year uh, two to three years, uh, the merge in between uh, Sprint and T-Mobile, lucky to uh, to be able to uh, to deliver this uh, this one based on on the five G emergence and so the rational for a new player to come took us two years to convince uh, to convince the regulator and the politicians that it was the right move for the US but I guess that was the right move looking for we work I mean COVID on one side was uh, tough when you are just when you are providing real estate to people I mean and when there is COVID of course nobody was really looking for real estate but post COVID I mean it's obvious that the world has changed and that uh, flex office is the way to go. And we, we work with as a global brand uh, for this type of uh, space. So of course, meanwhile, in the past two years, thanks to Sandy, thanks to Marcelo, we have restructured the company. And uh, when we joined with Marcelo, the, we work was making 1.8 billion losses and we will be profitable next year. So there is a bit of luck. Then there is, of course, a lot of uh, uh leadership management in order to make sure that uh, uh, that we can do it resilience never given up and uh, like uh, like lewis hamilton this weekend in brazil in formula one never give up that's uh, what uh, we have always in mind with uh, marcelo when we're teaming and working together just to make sure that we can uh, get it done of course it's better if you are in a 
uh, in a business which is growing and uh, telecommunication has been an industry that uh, underwent major upheaval in the past uh, in the past a few decades so which has uh, given us a lot of opportunities so that's uh, you know it's always optimistic ambitious realistic making sure that you have the right team making sure that you're in the right industry taking risks embracing risks because that's the way that's a way to win and that's uh, and that's what we are trying to reproduce now as an investor which i was not i was more an operator but it's just betting on the best teams that we may uh, that we see people which have already early tractions in terms of what they are developing and a uh, team which have identified uh, an opportunity and even if we know that the business model will change in the next coming uh, uh, few years when they start their company but uh, if you have the right team if you are in the right uh, industry with enough uh, potential i mean you have a let's say a great chance of success Absolutely. I mean, especially you mentioned, uh, you know, T-Mobile and, 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 and the merger um, with Sprint, obviously, with what happened when T-Mobile acquired VoiceStream and then, you know, so many different tra people tried to acquire the T-Mobile, you know, business, um, you know, people from Europe, you know, people from, you know, Free or Altis or, 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 or some of the other players that have actually tried to, uh, to, to do that, that deal and, and you ended up you know, being able to to make it happen. That was uh, that was remarkable. We have a question from uh, Iris Rosen, and she's uh, asking about um, what wellness, health, tech, health, nature infused businesses you're, are, are you looking at? Um, is there any any wealth, any wellness, any health, any tech health uh, business that, that in, uh, in, for example, in uh, fitness or healthness, we have invested in uh, Eight Sleep. I don't know whether you know this uh, this company, which is a uh, uh, which has been imported to Miami from uh, Italy and uh, Mexico, uh, led uh, by uh, Matteo and uh, Alexandra, and that's a world first sleep fitness company. So I I don't know whether I can do advertising, but I can tell you that it's really okay. great. So I encourage many of the people listening to this uh, uh, chat to look at uh, Eight Sleep because that's a really uh, uh, really cool uh, cool company. We have invested in another company called uh, Eru. Uh, which is a redefining real-time vision diagnosis and therapy, so which is an interesting one as well, and uh, which is uh, which is also based uh, based in Miami. Uh, we have uh, invested in another one which is uh, uh, called uh, Betterfly, and which is uh, coming from uh, Chile uh, to uh, to Miami, which is more about uh, rewards employee healthy habits. So it's about uh, uh, providing a benefits platform which track uh, and reward employees healthy habits uh, in order to uh, to provide the reward so that's uh, in between health and uh, and reward so i could take some others but so we have uh, plenty of uh, plenty of examples health is one of these sector which is going to be completely disrupted by by digital i mean in the way you uh, in the diagnosis in the way you treat in the way you take care of the patients in the way you ensure so there is so many things to be done in this uh, in this area and so that's one of our big vertical. That's awesome. Um, I mean, it is. It is. Uh, you know, it is. It, you know, it, it is interesting to see that some of those companies don't grab. You know, all the headlines, um, and so you don't hear about them. You know, that much. But uh, but I think uh, I think they're they're there. And, and you wanted to say something, Michel? No, no. I just wanted. And there is a kind of link with food tech, just to right. just to speak about Alain which is uh, this uh, amazing guy with his amazing insect company, which on top of that is a French company, which I love, so which is great. So that was an advertising page for you, Anna. People Thank you. should know more about insects. Thank you. Actually, you know, the, 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 uh, the South Florida, you know, region is, uh, is a very interesting uh, region for us. You know, there is a, a company called Atlantic Sapphire, which is publicly traded in Norway, uh, which uh, raises salmon um, in the Everglades, um, very, very large operation, $300 million investment. Um, and, um, and they, uh, they are just doing recirculating, recirculating aquaculture system in a very, very particular, um, setup in the Everglades. Um, so there's lots of things happening that, uh, that are sometimes under the radar or, 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 uh, or not, not grabbing, you know, all the headlines. Um, I wanted to, uh, to ask you about, you know, leading you know so many companies with 50,000 60,000 100,000 employees um now you're at a smaller you know a smaller outfit 
Is it is it better? Is it is it easier? Um, you know, is it? Are you having? Are you feeling that you're having the same impact, or do you prefer bigger bigger companies or smaller companies? Um, and it's, it seems like in Miami, there's a lot of smaller companies, um, you know, versus very very large outfits. So wanted to get your opinion on that. So the size of the company is not doesn't really matter. It's more the complexity of the problems that you have to solve. And true that uh, I led, for example, uh, Alcatelu Center, I had 77,000 employees all around the world. Sprint was uh, 30,000 when I was CEO of uh, this company, plus all the people working in our environments. But I have also been CEO of, uh, I was mentioning Nouvelle Frontier, we were probably a few thousand suddenly. I've been the CEO of uh, a nuclear energy company in France where we were probably 1,000. So, so I mean, there is a, the size doesn't really matter. It's always the same. I mean, to have the right team, uh, to make sure that you manage complexity in a proper manner, to have everyone aligned on what you're trying to achieve. So the big difference for me, to be fair now, is that I used to be an operator. And mm -hmm. so I was a CEO, not, unfortunately, not a founder. So I have been more an employee. So I have been an employee CEO, but so I was more an operator and I am learning the investment world, which is really great. And that makes SoftBank a little bit different because the DNA of SoftBank and the DNA of Massa or the DNA of Marcelo is they have been founders, operators and investors. So which means that I guess that we bring a little bit more uh, to companies in which we are investing. Usually what we say is uh, that, that capital is a little bit of a commodity and what really matters because if you have a good company, if you're a good, uh, a good team, I mean, you will find capital. Uh, the point is, can we bring you more than capital in terms of uh, support, capabilities, skills, which are going to help you to scale, to grow. And that's where our profile can be helpful. But coming back to your question, that's very different to be investor instead of being operator. And I can tell you, I mean, it was much more, my previous life was much more stressing. Uh, yeah. Investor is great because you just have to make sure that your companies are delivering. When you're an operator, and I guess that many of the people which are on this uh, chat today are entrepreneurs. So they are doing a real tough job compared to the one that I'm doing right now. So, and I admire uh, all the entrepreneurs that I'm meeting. That's a blessing for me right now to meet so many entrepreneurs, to be able to share a little bit my experience, but to figure out how we can help, how we can invest. I love it. And uh, so my, I am as busy as I were, probably a little bit less stressed. And it's so uh, an, uh, incredible because you see many companies from different sectors, so you can go from one to the other. And we do investments, which can be a few millions when I take, uh, or even less than a million when I take our opportunity funds until several billions. So which means that uh, SoftBank has this flexibility to be able to provide capital at any stage and at any size and in any type of segment, assuming that we are supporting a company which is leveraging tech or AI in order to disrupt the uh, uh, <coughs> the economy in which they are working. That's awesome. Um, we have a question from Stacey Ellis um, about fashion tech, and she's asking if uh, fashion tech is a space that SoftBank is investing in. Um, she's particularly moving uh, to Miami uh, with a fashion tech company. Um, is that a space that is of interest, um, or have there been any, any investment in that space? No, I, I brought to a SoftBank, I guess, probably the first investment in fashion tech because among my different ads, I am uh, uh, the ambassador of the Vision Fund for France. So many that uh, I was a little bit uh, surprised a few months ago when I discovered that SoftBank had done nearly no investment whatsoever in France. So I went to Massa, and Massa is always uh, uh, very pragmatic, and he said, okay, if you have good ideas, so just uh, uh, help the fund in order to make investments. So in the past uh, six months, we have done uh, uh, several investments for north of a billion. Uh, so in different companies, uh, such as Content Square, that uh, some of you probably know, uh, or such as Jelly Smack, or such as uh, Sora, which is uh, uh, which is an NFT company, so in, uh, in the blockchain world. But uh, we have also made uh, investments in a vestiaire collective, uh, so which is uh, this uh, uh, French uh, French company, which is uh, uh, which is re, uh, which is selling used uh, luxury uh, clothes and staffs. And so we had the board yesterday, by the way, 
And so that's an amazing company. And so leveraging and using technology in order to uh, to do it. Uh, so yes, I believe that uh, there is a uh, there is a future in that space as well. And uh, and uh, Vestier is doing a, an extremely great job. And uh, we will always look at uh, opportunities in this field as well. That's great. I mean, I know uh, Vestier, you know, quite well. You know, Max. Is a, uh, is a an amazing is an amazing founder. Ama amazing. He was not a founder of Vestia, he not founder. but he's a, he's an amazing CEO of Vestia. Yeah, absolutely, um, Mark. Yes, I have a, I have a, a question maybe to uh, wrap up this uh, session with Michel. Michel, do you now that you live in Miami, do you believe it is the Paris of the Caribbeans? <laughs> I would say that I have two places that I love: Paris and Miami. So I like to a kind of passerelle in between Paris and Miami. So that's two amazing places. And uh, I guess that there is more to be done in terms of exchange in between France and uh, France and Miami. So I think that uh, the initiative today is amazing because people don't know, if in France don't know enough what's happening in Miami. And uh, so all what we can do in order to uh, strengthen those relations is really great. So I am so excited to see so many French founders coming to Miami in order to really develop their, their companies or to grow their company. They might have founded the company in, in France and grow in the US and entering by Miami. So that's just amazing. So I love it. Perfect. We, sh we, sh we share this common point. Absolutely. Um, very final question. I think this is interesting from um, Paul Monsoon from Journey Business Plans. Uh, will SoftBank invest in Metaverse? We will. Uh, we will, of course, consider it. I mean, uh, who will not consider what's uh, what's coming in? I mean, we have invested in uh, gaming in the past. We have invested in a new type of environment. We, we are now embracing also blockchain. So we are uh, we are always we are curious and we are always looking at all what is emerging and what might be an important trend moving forward. And it's obvious that this will be a new trend moving forward. So that we will have to we will have to look at. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your energy with us. Uh, it was a great session. Thank you very much, Alain, for being our moderator today and for your great questions and to you all for watching. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Michel. Thank you to all of you. Great being with you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next uh, session will be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We will have the pleasure to be together again. So in the meantime, do visit our, um, our partners and sponsors in the expo area of the Hopin platform. And I will see you very, very soon tomorrow morning. Thank you.